Long division using partial quotients, sometimes called big seven. What are partial quotients? Partial means part, and a quotient is the answer to a division problem. So when you use partial quotients to divide, you're finding parts of the answer and then adding them all back together. When we use this strategy, we're gonna be thinking about multiplication, not division. That may seem strange, but we often use multiplication to solve basic division facts, like 12 divided by three. It's easier to think about this equation as multiplication with a missing number, like this. Three times what equals 12? Four. So 12 divided by three is four. We'll use this type of backwards thinking, but with larger numbers. We'll also use zeros to help us. Remember that adding zeros to a factor also adds zeros to your answer. We know that three times four is 12, so we also know that three times 40 is 120. We've just added a zero to the four and also to the 12. We also know that three times 400 is 1,200 and so on. Let's try one out. We're gonna divide 96 divided by three using partial quotients. When we use this strategy, we turn the division bracket into a big number seven, like this. That's why this strategy is often called big seven. We wanna take away groups of three to get this number, the dividend, down to zero, or as close as we can get to zero. Choose friendly numbers that you know and go big so that it doesn't take forever. I know that three times three is nine, so that means three times 30 is 90. I'm gonna take away 30 groups of three. Keep track of the number of groups over here. These are your partial quotients. 30 groups of three is 90, so I get to subtract 90. Nice, I only have six left. I know that three times two is six, so I'll take away two groups of three to get all the way down to zero. Got down to zero, that means I'm done. I just need to add all of my partial quotients together. Here's my partial quotients, add them up, and the final answer goes on top. 96 divided by three is 32. We can use multiplication to check the answer to a division problem. We multiply the quotient, which is the answer, by the divisor, the small number. If our answer is correct, we should get the dividend when we multiply the big number. Let's see if we do. Three times two is six and three times three is nine. Yes, our answer is correct. The beauty of big seven is that there's no one right way to do it. Choose friendly facts that you already know off the top of your head and just keep going until you get the dividend all the way to zero or as close as possible. Let's try another way because there's not just one way to solve this. We can solve this in lots of different ways. This time I'm thinking about three times 10 equals 30. That's a fact that I know off the top of my head. I'm gonna go ahead and take away 10 groups of three. And remember to keep track of how many groups you take away here over on the right. Okay, 10 times three is 30. 10 groups of three is 30. So I get to subtract 30. I have 66 left. Let's do that move again. I'll take away another 10 groups of three, which is 30. Now I have 36 left. I can do that again. Let's take away another 10 groups of three or another 30. And now I only have six left. I can take away two more groups of three because three times two is six, and that gets me down to zero, which means I am done. Add up your partial quotients, 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus two is 32. So we got the same answer two different ways. Both are correct. The first way was a little more efficient. It was quicker and easier, and that's why it pays to think big. Let's try a three-digit dividend, this time 324 divided by two. 
I want to go big, so I'm going to take away 100 groups of two. That's 200, and I'm left with 124. Great start. I know 50 times 2 is 100, so let's take away 50 groups of 2 next, down to 24. I know 2 times 12 is 24. Let's take away 12 groups of 2 to get all the way down to 0. And then we'll add up our partial quotients, and our answer is 162. Remember, you can always use multiplication to check your answer by multiplying the answer by the divisor, and you should hopefully get your dividend if you're correct, and we are. Now let's look at a four-digit dividend. This is the same process, just with a little bit of a bigger number. So think big. Five times five is 25, so five times 500 is 2,500 or 2,500. And when we subtract, we're left with 185. Wow, we got a lot of our number. We got rid of a lot of our number there. Let's keep going. Now we're gonna take away, uh, how about 30 groups of five? Because that's 150, and that leaves me with 35. Oh, seven, five times seven is 35. Let's take away seven groups of five, and I'm down to zero. Finally, add up your partial quotients to get the answer, 537, and then it's always a good idea to check your answer by multiplying it by the divisor to see if you get your dividend. And we did, we have the correct answer. Let's look at one more problem, this time with a remainder, 254 divided by four. The two in the 200 makes me think of 20, and I know that four times five is 20, so that means four times 50 is 200. I'll start by taking away 50 groups of four. That's 200, that's pretty good. Now I'm down to 54. Four times 10 is 40, that's an easy fact I know. I'll take away 10 groups of four, and I have get to subtract 40, and I only have 14 left. Let's use the fact four times three equals 12, because 12 is pretty close to 14. 14 minus 12 is two. Hmm, I only have two left. That's not enough to take away even one group of four. I'd need at least four for that. So I'm done. I can't take away any more groups of four. And I'm gonna add up my partial quotients, 63, and that two at the bottom is my remainder. I can also check this one with multiplication the same way. Multiply the quotient by the divisor. And then, don't forget, you have to add the remainder to it. And if you get the dividend once you've finished adding the remainder, then you have the correct answer. Let's review. Take away groups of the divisor until you get the dividend down to zero or as close as possible to zero. Use friendly multiplication facts that you already know off the top of your head. Use zero to go big. Taking away bigger numbers actually makes the problem quicker and less confusing. This video was created by La Fontaine of Knowledge. Click the link in the description for lesson materials that go along with the video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.